Section 18 of Selected Letters of Beethoven. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Selected Letters, Numbers 341 through 344, 349, 358 through 360, 363, 368, 370 through 374, 400, 467, and 474, by Ludwig van Beethoven. As compiled and with footnotes by Dr. Ludwig Knoll, and translated by Lady Grace Wallace. Letter number 341, to Schindler. Hetzendorf, July 2nd, 1823. Worthy Herr V. Schindler, the incessant insolence of my landlord from the hour I entered his house up to the present moment compels me to apply for aid to the police, so I beg you will do so for me at once. As to the double winter windows, the housekeeper was desired to see about them, and especially to state if they were not necessary after such a violent storm, in case of the rain having penetrated into the room. But her report was that the rain had not come in, and, moreover, that it could not possibly do so. In accordance with her statement, I locked the door to prevent this rude man entering my room during my absence, which he had threatened. Say also, further, what his conduct to you was, and that he put up a placard of the lodgings being to let, without giving me notice, which, besides, he has no right to do till St. James's Day. He is equally unfair in refusing to give up the receipt from St. George's Day till St. James's, as the enclosure shows. I am charged, too, for lighting, of which I know nothing." This detestable lodging, footnote one, without any open stove, and the principal flue truly abominable, has cost me, for extra outlay exclusive of the rent, two hundred fifty-nine florins, in order merely to keep me alive while I was there during the winter. It was a deliberate fraud, as I never was allowed to see the rooms on the first floor, but only those on the second, that I might not become aware of their many disagreeable drawbacks. I cannot understand how a flu so destructive to health can be tolerated by the government. You remember the appearance of the walls of your room owing to smoke, and the large sum it cost even to lessen in any degree this discomfort, although to do away with it wholly was impossible. My chief anxiety at present is that he may be ordered to take down his placard, and to give me a receipt for the house-rent I have paid." but nothing will induce me to pay for the abominable lighting, without which it costs me enough actually to preserve my life in such a lodging. My eyes do not yet suffer me to encounter the town atmosphere, or I would myself apply in person to the police. Your attached, Beethoven. Footnote 1. The Fargasse in the Leimgrube, where Schindler lived with him. End of letter number 341. Letter number 342 to Schindler. I must have an attested copy of all the writings. I send you forty-five kreutzers. How could you possibly accept such a proposal from our churlish landlord when accompanied by a threat? Where was your good sense? Where it always is. Tomorrow early I shall send for the variations, copy and originals. It is not certain whether the PR comes or not, so be so good as to stay at home till eight o'clock. You can come to dinner either today or tomorrow, but you must settle which you mean to do, as it is not easy for me to provide provisions. Not later than half-past two o'clock. The housekeeper will tell you about a lodging in the Landstrasse. It is high time, truly. As soon as you hear of anything to be had on the Bastei or the Landstrasse, you must at once give me notice. We must find out what room the landlord uses, on account of the well. Vale. End of letter number 342. Letter number 343. To Schindler, footnote one. Hetzendorf, 1823. Samothracian vagabond, you were dispatched yesterday to the South Pole, whereas we went off to the North Pole, a slight difference now equalized by Captain Perry. There were, however, no mashed potatoes there. Bach, note, his lawyer, to whom I beg my best regards, is requested to say what the lodging in Baden is to cost. We must also try to arrange that Carl should come to me once every fortnight there, but cheaply, good heavens, poverty and economy. I entrust this matter to you, as you have your friends and admirers among the drivers and liverymen. If you get this in time, you had better go to Bach to-day, so that I may receive his answer to-morrow forenoon. It is almost too late now. 
you might also take that rascal of a copyist by surprise i don't expect much good from him he has now had the variations for eight days your note friend stroked out amicus beethoven footnote one he no doubt alludes to captain perry the celebrated traveller who wrote an article in the a m zeitung on the music of the eskimo end of letter number three hundred forty three Letter number 344. To Schindler. Footnote 1. June 1823. Samothracian, don't trouble yourself to come here till you receive a hati sharif. I must say you do not deserve the golden cord. My fast-sailing frigate, the worthy and well-born Frau Schnapps, will call every three or four days to inquire after your health. Farewell. Bring no one whatever with you. Farewell. Footnote 1. Schindler says in his biography, quote, These variations, note Opus 120, were completed in June 1823, and delivered to the publisher Diabelli without the usual amount of time bestowed on giving them the finishing touches. And now he set to work at once on the Ninth Symphony, some jottings of which were already written down. Forthwith, all the gay humor that had made him more sociable, and in every respect more accessible, at once disappeared. All visits were declined. End quote etc. End of letter number 344. Letter number 349 to Schindler. August 1823. You Samothracian villain! Make haste and come, for the weather is just right. Better early than late. Presto, prestissimo. We are to drive from here. Footnote 1. Footnote 1. Beethoven had apartments in a summer residence of Baron Prones on his beautiful property at Hetzendorf. Suddenly, however, the maestro, deeply immersed in the Ninth Symphony, was no longer satisfied with this abode, because, quote, the Baron would persist in making him profound bows every time that he met him, end quote. So, with the help of Schindler and Frau Schnapps, he removed to Baden in August, 1823. End of letter number 349. Letter number 358 to Schindler. Baden, September, 1823. Signore Papageno, that your scandalous reports may no longer distress the poor Dresdener, I must tell you that the money reached me today, accompanied by every possible mark of respect to myself. Though I should have been happy to offer you a substantial acknowledgement for the, note, illegible, effaced by Schindler, you have shown me, I cannot yet accomplish to the full extent what I have so much at heart. I hope to be more fortunate some weeks hence. Note, see number 329. Per il Signore Nobile, Papageno Schindler. End of letter number 358. Letter number 359 to Schindler, 1823. The occurrence that took place yesterday, which you will see in the police reports, is only too likely to attract the notice of the established police to this affair. The testimony of a person whose name is not given entirely coincides with yours. In such a case, private individuals cannot act. The authorities alone are empowered to do so. Footnote 1. Yours, Beethoven. Footnote 1. Schindler says, quote, Brother Johann the apothecary was ill in the summer of 1823, and during that time his disreputable wife visited her lover, an officer, in the barracks, and was often seen walking with him in the most frequented places, besides receiving him in her own house. Her husband, though confined to bed, could see her adorning herself to go in search of amusement with her admirer. Beethoven, who was informed of this scandal from various quarters, appealed vigorously to his brother, in the hope of persuading him to separate from his ill-conducted wife, but failed in his attempt, owing to the indolence of this ill-regulated man. End quote. It was Schindler, too, who prevented Beethoven making any further application to the police. The following note probably refers to this. In his notebook of November 1823, is a canon written by Beethoven on his brother Johann and his family, on these words, quote, Fett Lümmel Bankert haben triumphiert, end quote. No doubt an allusion to the disgraceful incident we have mentioned. Brother Johann's wife had a very lovely daughter before she married him. End of letter number 359. Letter number 360 to Schindler. Wiseacre, I kiss the hem of your garment. 
End of letter number 360. Letter number 363 to Schindler. 1824. Frau S. Note, schnapps, will provide what is required. So come to dinner today at two o'clock. I have good news to tell you. Footnote one. But this is quite entre nous, for the brain eater, note, his brother Johann, must know nothing about it. Footnote one. This no doubt refers to a letter from Prince Galizin, March eleventh, eighteen twenty four. Quote, I beg you will be so good as to let me know when I may expect the quartet, which I await with the utmost impatience. If you require money, I request you will draw on Messieurs Stieglitz and Company in St. Petersburg for the sum you wish to have, and it will be paid to your order. End, quote. End of letter number 363. Letter number 368 to Herr Schindler. Do not come to me till I summon you. No concert. Beethoven. End of letter number 368. Letter number 370 to Schindler, 1824. If you have any information to give me, pray write it down, but seal the note for which purpose you will find wax and a seal on my table. Let me know where Dupont, footnote one, lives, when he is usually to be met with, and whether I could see him alone, or if it is probable that people will be there, and who. I feel far from well. Portez-vous bien. I am still hesitating whether to speak to Dupont or write to him, which I cannot do without bitterness. Do not wait dinner for me. I hope you will enjoy it. I do not intend to come, being ill from our bad fare of yesterday. A flask of wine is ready for you. Footnote 1. Schindler says that on April 24, 1824, he applied to Dupont, at that time administrator of the Kärntnotor Theater, in Beethoven's name, to sanction his giving a grand concert there, allowing him to have the use of the house for the sum of 400 florins cm. Further, that the conducting of the concert should be entrusted to Umlauf and Schupanzig, and the solos to Mesdames Unger and Zontag, and to the bass singer Preisinger. End of letter number 370. Letter number 371, footnote 1, to Schindler. To Schindler, I beg you will come to see me tomorrow, as I have a tale to tell you as sour as vinegar. Dupar said yesterday that he had written to me, though I have not yet got his letter, but he expressed his satisfaction, which is best of all. The chief feat, however, is not yet performed, that which is to be acted in front of the proscenium. Note, in Beethoven's writing, Yours from C-sharp below to high F, Beethoven. Footnote 1, written by his nephew. End of letter number 371. Letter number 372 to Schindler. After six weeks of discussion here, there, and everywhere, I am fairly boiled, stewed, and roasted. What will be the result of this much-talked-of concert if the prices are not raised? What shall I get in return for all my outlay, as the copying alone costs so much? End of letter number 372. Letter number 373 to Schindler. At twelve o'clock today, quote, in die Birne, end quote, Note, an inn on the Landstrasse, thirsty and hungry, then to the coffee-house, back again here, and straight to Penzing, or I shall lose the lodging. End of letter number 373. Letter number 374, to Schindler. When you write to me, write exactly as I do to you, without any formal address or signature. Vita brevis ars longa. No necessity for details, only the needful. End of letter number 374. Letter number 400 to Schindler. The Spring of 1825. I have waited till half past one o'clock, but as the Caput Confusum has not come, I know nothing of what is likely to happen. Karl must be off to the university in the Prater, so I am obliged to go, that Karl, who must leave this early, may have his dinner first. I am to be found in the, quote, Wilde Mann, end quote, an inn in the Prater. To Herr Schindler, Moravian numbskull. Footnote 1. Footnote 1. Schindler was a Moravian. End of letter number 400. Letter number 467. To Schindler. The end of February, 1827. When we meet, we can discuss the mischance that has befallen you. I can send you some person without the smallest inconvenience. Do accept my offer. It is at least something. 
Have you had no letters from Moscolese or Kramer? There will be a fresh occasion for writing on Wednesday, and once more urging my project. If you are still indisposed at that time, one of my people can take the letter and get a receipt from the post office. Vale et fave. I need not assure you of my sympathy with your misfortune. Pray, allow me to supply board for you in the meantime. I offer this from my heart. May heaven preserve you. Your sincere friend, Beethoven. End of letter number 467. Letter number 474. Footnote 1. To Schindler. March 17th, 1827. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful! Both the learned gentlemen are defeated, and I shall be saved solely by Malfatti's skill. You must come to me for a few minutes without fail this forenoon. Yours, Beethoven. Footnote 1. Schindler dates this note March 17, 1827, and says that these are the last lines Beethoven ever wrote. They certainly were the last that he wrote to Schindler. On the back of the note, in another writing, probably Schindler's, the receipt is given in pencil for the bath with hay steeped in it, ordered by Malfatti, which the poor invalid thought had saved his life. The, quote, learned gentlemen, end quote, are Dr. Vavruch and the surgeon Zybert, who had made the punctures. End of letter number 474. End of section 18 of Selected Letters of Beethoven as compiled and with footnotes by Dr. Ludwig Knoll and translated by Lady Grace Wallace.